How's it going everyone? I just purchased this machine right here. It's a 1069 New Holland bail wagon. And I'm hoping it's gonna work a lot better and pick up bales faster than our pull type bail wagon, which was a New Holland 1033. There's a lot of differences in design, differences and improvements that they made. This machine is about 10 years newer than the 1033 bell wagon pull type that we still have kind of as a backup for now if this thing happens to fail but this is the first time about to take it out to the field so let's go check it out on the baler well a line popped out and we lost pressure on the bit on the bales so our bales were averaging about five pounds and that's a really light bale they should be weighing around 50 pounds and five pounds is nowhere close to 50 so that took the baler back up to the shop and then I just came through with a knife and I broke the bales that were baled too light so we can rebale them. But as I was saying, this is the bale that got baled too light when the hydraulic pressure broke and like I said I shouldn't be able to just chuck it around the field like that. It shouldn't be that easy to throw with one hand. So it's going to be a little bit of a slow start for shawl harvest. We can see it already, but at least the combines are going. Not too sure if you can see, but there's one there, there's one over there. They're waiting on trucks. The grain carts broke down. It's not as productive as I would, as we would like to have, to see it so far. But it's currently about five o'clock, and it's Fourth of July. So, happy Fourth of July to everyone! All right. Well, I want to head back up to the shop and see what dad needs to get the baler back up and running well I think we got the baler back up and going again we're about to test it out right now
shooting for a 36 inch bale and I think these bales are a little too long. to make a difficult situation here. The baler seems to be running fine now. And we got the bail the bail length adjusted where we need to. But we're seeing a lot of just areas of wet straw. And we're gonna I think we're gonna try moving to a different side of the field seeing if the straw is a little drier over there but if not we might have to rake this hay over which I really don't want to do because we have those basket rakes and those basket rates these windrows are just too too much from basket rakes and what will happen is, is the these big windrows will sometimes plug up the basket rake or the basket drink won't be able to move them and then it's making an inconsistent windrow. So, it's a tough situation what we got going on here. But the positive of this straw being a little damp is that these rotary combines not going to tear the straw up into little short little pieces it's going to help make the straw longer so we're getting longer straw which is typically what people want but we're not getting the dryness to get this straw baled but if it was dry where we can bale it right after the combine then the straw would be all chopped up and a lot of pieces that are people don't like chopped up sh straw so it's a give or take situation but we'll see what we come up here and I'll catch you again here soon momentarily all right so we found the dry spot in the field to go ahead and bail that's right there in the baler This is my second load of this bale wagon. There's a few little flaws with it. And I think one of the flaws is, is the baler's making just a inch or two longer of a bale. So I think when I have dad try to shorten his bale length up so they come on here easy. But there's a lot of things I like about this bale wagon. And it still does work a lot better compared to our 1033 pole type model. I'm pretty impressed so far.
a straw that doesn't get bailed. Well, if it builds up in a pile right in front of the bale, the bale chute won't pick this bale up. So you have to kind of kick this out of the way. But now it should be able to pick that bale up. these stacks right here pull is 160 bales we got six across for three wide six backs and nine tall that's a 160 bales and I'm not too sure if you can see that these bales and that bale up there, same thing on the other side. They're facing vertical. The machine does that and they call it a tie layer. And the tie layer helps hold the stack in place. If you didn't have a tie layer, your stack would be very unstable and it would fall over. <laughs> but just look how straight that is. pretty good I'll show you what the 1033 bale wagon stacks like here over here real quick I will say the bale length has to be perfect and they have to be consistent bales so if your baler ain't throwing out 36 inch bales the bale wagon's not, not for your operation. But this is the 1033 stack. This is the 1033 bale wagon. It's a pull type. And this is the kind of stack it does. And as you can see, we have more brace boards here and we got bales hanging off. And it's just not that best of a stack. Now, I do grant, I do think there's some adjustments we can make to help a little bit, but so far, that 1069 bale wagon, it's working for me. There are a few flaws with it that I've got to get sorted out to make it a little more efficient, but so far it's working much better than this thing. And like I said earlier, this bale wagon's 10 years older. Now, the 1069, I mean, it doesn't look much newer, but it is. I'm telling you what, there's just so many improvements on this thing. I just can't say it. I'm impressed. Now, this machine, I mean, the, it got pretty abused by the previous owner. I would like to try to restore it this winter. Um, get a fresh coat of paint on it. I mean, it's a fixer-upper, but she's running right now. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. And please leave a like and comment down below. Thanks.